Hello internet friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lindsay or Lijo. And today we're going to be speaking on how your problems, they have some purpose behind them. One of the most beautiful facets of life is how our problems point us in the direction that we need to grow. So we're gonna be talking all about that today. If you'd like to talk to me about this subject more in depth, you can book a video session with me below on my platform Snug. So let's get started. All right, so pressure is an actual privilege. When we are put in a place of pressure, it's an environment that allows us a great amount of growth and the potential for change. And it's often in times of great pressure that we come up face to face with what we perceive to be our greatest problems, at least through how we see it. So every problem you perceive is a chance to gain some very expensive information on yourself. Well, why do I use the word expensive? Because the kind of information that you can get about yourself from what you perceive to be a problem is the kind of information that people will go pay thousands and thousands of dollars to a guru to tell them when they have access to that information themselves. The secret here is attuning to the fact that you perceive something to be a problem. Well, just that perception, just you attuning to the fact that you are perceiving a problem, well, you're half of the way there. Now it's just reverse engineering to get your answer. And I mean, can we just give it up for nature? Nature is trying to help us survive by calling out our inadequacies and trying to restore balance by us perceiving our problems as problems. It's helping us to see, essentially, our lower cognitive functions and to kind of, you know, garner those up a little bit for the sake of our own survival. And if you don't think this is nature's way of, you know, impacting us and that we all perceive these problems differently, well, look at a family of kids, right? So let's say you have three or four siblings and you can go find some if you don't believe me. Uh, they grew up in somewhat of a constant of the same environment, let's say, and ask them what was their greatest problem growing up? What was their, the greatest problem in their childhood? And you're likely gonna get three or four different answers. Well, why is that? They grew up in the same kind of environment. You might have one kid say, well, you know, I was bullied in school and that was just, that was my big problem. I, I had that problem. One might be, you know, I never got enough time with my father, and that was their perceived greatest problem. And one of them might be, you know, I was always trying to be places and my mom was always late wherever we would go, right? Or maybe, you know, whatever it was, you're gonna get different answers. And that's because it's not just our environment dictating us what our problems are, despite what many people think, but it's also our state of cognition that exists within that context. So now I ask you, not what are your problems, because this is where we get all those stereotypical answers, like my problems, oh, I don't have enough money. I don't have enough this. I don't have, not what are your problems. My question to you is what do you have problems with? What do you have problems with? Be honest with yourself, write it down. What do you have problems with? Now let's take it a step further and ask yourself, well, can you tell me about a time in which this problem really presented itself? What made it such a big problem for you? How did it impact you? And last but not least, what does this teach you about yourself? Now, when you're thinking about a time in which this problem presented itself, what I want you to do is avoid blaming as you're playing out this narrative because often what will happen is people want to avoid taking responsibility so they'll default that blame on someone else. Well, this was a problem because so-and-so, because such and such didn't work out. Bring to light what the problem was in that particular instance and ask yourself, well, what does this teach me about myself? And best of all, how might my lower functions be used to help me solve this problem. Because nine times out of 10, our perceived problems are actually just our lower cognitive functions and them crying out for help as we fearlessly deny them day in and day out. Now, if I were to answer this question for myself, we got a little Lindy. If I were to answer this question for myself, I would say, um, you know, what do I have a problem with? I would say it's, likely having relevant topics of conversation to exchange with people that 
aren't in my particular niche or areas that I have all this information built up on. So, you know, we refer to that as small talk, and I know that sounds kind of generic and, and lame, but I can think of so many instances in which I didn't engage, in which I was just completely out of place, and I just don't have relevant conversational topics 99% of the time. Um, even the introverts out there, I mean, some of you like anime, some of you like movies. I, I don't watch anything. I don't consume media. I don't have any kind of knowledge on what's happening, what's cool, what's neat. And so those are the kind of topics that people use as banter and that initial kind of connection to establish some kind of groundwork. Like we have some kind of similarity here, right? So that is and has been a problem for me. It is directly calling out, my problem is directly calling out my lower functions and my avoidance of them, my lack of responsibility towards them. So this is just one example. I challenge you to look at this for yourself and see what direction this problem is pointing you in and how you can use those lower functions to conquer it and solve it for yourself. That's it for this video. I will see you in my next one. Goodbye, internet friends.